Okay, so let's cover how to get this mesh in game uh, with the Nef Tools workflow, just exporting directly from 3ds Max and uh, using the Nefscope program to splice the mesh into an existing vanilla Nef so that it displays our mesh in game, which is the the simplest route to take to to get your mesh in game, and it's the the same route that we took in the block out stage when we just wanted our mesh in game very fast. Uh, it's not precise uh, and it might be a bit buggy, but it it, it mostly works. <laughs> it's the, it's, I'd say it's the, the technique that the majority of modders use. So if you don't care about collision and you just want to see your model in game as soon as possible, then this is a good route to take. And I will be covering the, the 3ds Max 2013 official workflow later on. Uh, so I don't think I'll include the speed loader just yet. I'll splice that in later. And uh, we want to hide the iron sights mesh because that's an optional mod which won't go into the receiver mesh itself because we want that as a separate scope mod later on. So yeah, uh, first thing we need to do is think about our X form. So when we reset X form, it resets all the translation of the mesh so that the origin all the changes which we've made to the mesh, all the, the hundreds of additions and modifications which we've done to it are then all reset at the touch of a button, a shortcut in my case, but in your case you might have to go to, um, oh yeah, reset X form and reset selected and then collapse, which will reset the pivot. So we need to do this for every mesh. Just to make sure the pivots don't go flying around when we're trying to do precision. I just selected the bullets there, it might be hard to see. I probably should have used wireframe mode. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll select the whole mesh and then we'll go up into our NIFS folder, hit N and then export over our NIFS, our existing receiver NIF with these settings. Okay, so what's happened is the the mesh has zeroed out all its transforms. So if I spread these out a bit, you'll be able to see what's actually happened here. So I'll start with the actual frame. So the pivot of the frame is here. See, almost on the corner there. And because of that, it was put at zero, zero on the origin here. The pivot of the hammer is here and as a result it was put at zero zero here so this is what happens when you export with all the parts with this setting active so if you if you don't want that you can export like this and yeah, it still does it <laughs> I thought it wouldn't hmm No, okay. That's what I usually do anyway, is the zero of the transform, so it doesn't really change anything, but it is a bit more confusing for you, the viewer, if you haven't seen this kind of thing before. But uh, we'll start with the frame. What I've done is I, I deleted the old block out because it was, you know, old. We don't know which what changes we might have made to it. Uh, so we're starting from scratch again with the, the vanilla 44. So we'll paste our frame in. And we'll try to get it in the correct position using the curse keys. Unfortunately, you can only do increments of one, even if you click on these spinners. If you want to do uh, smaller increments, you have to select and then press a key. Uh, it is a bit finicky. You can't really pr say press zero two because it just resets. So you need to select all the numbers every time. It is a bit bit tedious but what can you do it's a free community tool so it's greatly appreciated um, we might have to not have it so far down a lot of uh, fine positioning work has to take place in Nifscope 
because uh, in 3ds Max you could just snap things together and have it be perfect but in uh, in Escape there's quite a lot of guesswork involved in uh, in regards to the positioning another thing you can do in 3ds Max is to see all of your parts together which is very very useful for for you know the, seeing all of the parts of a weapon and how they they might fit together so let's go with that for now we'll hit accept and then what we want to do is steal the lighting shader property from this frame and give it to our frame so the node number is 42 and we want to add that to our frame obviously it'll have the material on it um, so we'll, we'll wipe that out in a minute but what we can't do is have two of the same node number in the same hierarchy because as I've described before everything needs to have a number from 0 to however far it goes 46 so and it can't have a duplicate number so you can't have two 42s so all we need to do is remove the old frame and keep our new one and there we go um, our trigger's already here, so we can get rid of the magnet trigger. I'll do remove branch this time. Actually, I'll save before I do that because you can't really undo some of these things. Remove branch, that removes the mesh, the lighting shader property, and the texture set underneath it. So the mesh, the lighting shader property, and the texture set. The reason why we don't do remove branch on the old frame is because it would also delete its lighting shader property which we want to use and keep for our frame so I'm not really going to pay attention to the positioning too much with this because I'm going to be doing the 3ds Max proper workflow later this is purely for instructive purposes rather than to have something you know practical let's try the yoke next you'll see this tiny piece out here and that actually fits into this hole here uh, you'll see how that works later so we need the yoke and that goes under weapon magazine and we'll call it oh yeah we should steal the name so we're gonna copy the the uh, the, the header the header string number here and apply it to the gate and we'll also as we did before with the frame we'll steal the lighting shader property what we might also want to do uh, is move this further out and so yeah what I'm doing here is you can either put a minus on the front and then type a number in or type a number and then put the minus in afterwards or just keep pressing down until you go into the negatives and then you can add to it or subtract to it yeah see because when I went to zero it defaulted to a positive yeah just little finicky things that Nifscope likes to do so again I'm, I'm positioning these as if I'm going to be in, uh, doing custom animation later which I will be I'm not uh, positioning these to work perfectly with vanilla animation so it'll look fine when it's still in the hand but as soon as animations start playing it's gonna pop and explode and all kinds of exci exciting stuff will happen <laughs> Oh, so I hit control s to save and it seems I hadn't deleted the old yoke which existed so its name its name had been sanitized what that means is the nodes have been restructured to support those extra extra nodes because as I mentioned before you can't have duplicate uh, duplicate node ID so we'll delete the old yoke by hitting remove looks like the spoke is actually a separate element under child ah, it's, an, it's the ejector so this actually pops out this isn't a feature on the hunting revolver um, so we'll remove that I think what yes yeah, so what's that what that's done is it's deposited the lighting shader property which was on that spoke 
outside of the root 9 node. So all we need to do is remove branch and that gets rid of the excess. So what we should have done is removed branch on the spoke, but instead I just hit standard remove. Kind of a safe move for me to do that, so I'm, I'm fine with that. But remove branch would have been more efficient. You never really know what material could be shared by uh, by other parts, but it's probably fine. That's quite a bit of geometry for the front of the cylinder, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so what's next? We need to oh, move this back a bit, just a bit. So obviously I'm moving these meshes. You can see here a visual of, of the, the root bone and the mesh is that, that far away from the, the original origin of the weapon magazine bone, which is here. So let's transform this. So Y is the forward back direction, so we need to take it back a bit. Yep. Save. Always save. Keep constantly saving. And maybe even go back into your your meshes folder and actually make a copy of the NIF because there's no <laughs> there's no iterative saving, there's no auto back. All that stuff isn't gonna save you here. I think what I'll do is I'll I'll do the material now to make it a bit clearer what we're actually doing. So I'll find the, uh, the, 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 the path for the BGSM. You can see here, there's a string which points to the BGSM file, which is the material file, which detects, dictates which textures the mesh is using. All we need to do is rename it to our mesh, which we want to use. I think I'll actually make a new Oh, I've already made the BGSM. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll actually take the normal map, which I made, with Marmoset, open it in Photoshop, and then hit Control S to save. Hit I for Intel Texture Works. This you can download, uh, just find it on Google. It's free. And. Um, this will let me save the my PSD Photoshop document as a DDS, which is a texture that the game uses. All Fallout 4 textures are DDS. So what I'll do is I'll choose my normal map uh, preset, which is obviously texture type normal map and BC5, which we also use for specular, I think. Hit OK. And if we go back, we now have our new DDS. So what I'll do is I'll uh, cut that, go to my textures folder, and then paste it, and then that replaces our existing normal map, which our material already points to. This is another community tool, by the way. Uh, the name escapes me. Yeah, Material Editor by Usnius. <laughs> so yeah, obviously you can find it pretty easily using this link. Um, you know, when you use something for so long, you forget what it's actually called if it's not there at the top all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have it pointing to the, the correct paths. Um, so if we go back to our NIF and we then point to the material which we're using. So if I shift right click copy his path, paste it in here just so we can edit it, and then copy this path, everything after materials, not including the uh, quote marks at the end, and then simply replace the path with ours, hit enter, save. And if I reload the NIF, ah. Is it gone? Oh, <laughs> we're working in the 44 NIF. Oh, that's great. Um, I'm going to have to rename these. My mistake. So we've lost our vanilla 44 NIF, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, we can just copy it later from our resource folders that we exported. So yeah, now everything's using the, the normal map, and we can actually see that it's applying really well. There's a bit of odd oddness up here. I might have to 
edit the smoothing groups later on. But that that'll be simply going back in the process and rebaking and then exporting the mesh again. So yeah, it's in, it's important to to check that you know the shading's right earlier in the process. So I maybe shouldn't have been so ambitious with the with the bolts on the top, but hey hey, it's always nice to have a go at better optimization. Okay, so we don't need that. So let's try for the hammer next. So I'll just go through this quickly now because you know what the deal is. That's 28, so we'll steal 28. Remove the original. And then edit our replacement. So this, this is interesting because the actual bone itself is rotated, I think, 45 degrees back. So any movements that we do <laughs> are actually happening at an angle. So I need to put a bit more thought into what's actually going on. Also, we seem to be off axis. That's interesting. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, so <laughs> I think what I did was I uh, I used this bolt here as a pivot for the hammer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the pivot only. Right click the spinner to send it to zero and then re-export the NIF and now this is my new reference uh, splice source NIF we'll delete this one and now that's popped out the lighting shader property because it's not owned anymore the hammer was under weapon extra one so we'll paste it and then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up this shader again and then that pops it back under here Good, so we'll have another go. Uh, I've already forgotten what I put. <laughs> um, it's a bit off, isn't it? This does sometimes happen with uh, FBX. Oops, supposed to press 4 there. It's just a case of, is that still? Yeah, it's still... Hmm. Ah, did I not reset X-Form? <laughs> like I said, got to reset X-Form, it's so important. Right. Yeah, that looks right. Third time's the charm. Yeah. I can remove this old one. Save. And then we can Did I take the wrong one again? Ah, the actual receiver itself might be out of Yeah. <laughs> the origin of the receiver itself is not on zero X. Oh boy, this sniff scope stuff. Um, to be honest, this would also be a problem if uh, I had exported anyway to 3DS using the proper workflow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, tutorial on kind of rushing things. What we can do is right click the old transform, copy it, and then just paste it to our new one, and then that instantly puts them at the same location and then we can delete the old one so this name is wrong we need it to be I imagine just 44 or 44 magnum receiver yeah zero so this is the name of a ninode as you can see here the name of a bone whereas anything with a zero after it is usually a mesh. So you see here the bolt latch is a mesh, the receiver is a mesh. The bolt latch is not something which we're going to use, it's a vanilla thing, so we'll remove branch on that. So now
are we in line? Looks like we are. It's just the yoke which is out now because it, uh, <coughs> or is it? Yeah, I'll try and hurry up a bit because there's so many small errors going on. I don't think you want to sit there for two hours watching me fiddle with everything. This is why I use 3ds Max. <laughs> uh, it's a lot more precise. I've not used this method in a in a while, just for the blockouts, really. needs to be deeper yeah because yeah I wish this had a gizmo some arrows you could just grab and uh, move around be a lot simpler than remembering which direction things need to go in yeah okay so for the cylinder Try and figure out which one's my most recent. Mm, nine. Zero would be the. I should know it wouldn't because it'd be header list. Then we remove the old. <laughs> Look at the tiny bullets trying to fit into the larger cylinder. So Z is up, Y is forwards. I'm going to put a 5 and then re reverse it. Okay, so roughly there. I'll take the old bullets and replace them. So yeah, there isn't really an X-ray view in NIFScope like there is in 3DS. What we need to do is we'll right-click our cylinder and copy the transform and then find our bullets again. Yeah, that's them. And then we'll paste the transform and you can sort of see they've gone into the perfect position and then we can select. <laughs> I did spend a lot of time in NIFScope clipping the camera into the mesh to actually see things. Okay, so 19, this is, should be called 17, and then with 19, it's a shader property, and then remove the old casings, and then we have these. Hmm. Ah, there must be some kind of cube map being applied, the bullets must have their own cube map, which makes sense, we'll ignore that for now, I'll explain that later. So hit save, and then what I'm going to do is right click sanitize and reorder blocks and then that renumbers everything so that from 0 to 39 we have the the correct numbering and there's no duplicates or uh, weird numbers going on like you know 27 43 or 32 13 you know higher lower it, it's all in one order what's left so we have the bullet caps on front of the bullets Okay, 20, and then we'll grab the transform of the bullets and paste them onto the, paste the position onto the bullet ends and then they're in the perfect position. Um, where did the original bullets go actually? So these are under 5, so I actually put these in the wrong position. So yeah, these it's hard to follow because I'm moving so fast, but I've put the the bullet, the actual bullet ends under Magazine Child 4 when they should be under Magazine Child 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the node number for these bullets, which is 40, and then under Magazine Child I'm going to change the child from 16 to 40, and then that grabs the the correct bullet ends R1 and deposits the old 
bullets again outside of the Ninode. Then we can safely remove these. Save again. Ah, so this was Web Magazine Child 538. Ah, okay, I must not have named it properly. This is the thing with um, Nifscope is it's again very hacky, very temperamental with the naming. Okay, so there's only one of that. So this should be... So it's actually made a new name for it. Perhaps it's bullets. Bullet case. Bullets, that makes sense. Bullets. Save. Yeah, well, that's good. Alright, we're almost there. I think we might be there, actually. Is there anything else to splice in? Yoke, yep. Yeah. Right, six, yep. Yeah. I think we're done. So, oh, I think I saved it as 44 again. <laughs> so I hit save, close that out. Don't save that. So yeah, since we were working inside Nifscope and it thought it was still in the 44 file, when we hit save it, it just saved itself as 44 again. We weren't working in the, the new file. <laughs> So we got there in the end. Right. Let's try this out in game. Okay, we're in game, obviously. And uh, you can see the revolver came in fine. This is the Nifscope uh, splicing technique. It's how most people, I imagine, would get their guns in game. Uh, and yeah. see the pivot is very off <laughs> but uh i don't care because i'm going to be animating it with the custom animation so the actual bone locations don't actually matter but what does matter is the um the position of all the meshes in the inventory and in the world because this is how you're going to be viewing the gun you know in your inventory and as it drops on the floor and, and stuff like that so this this all the, the parts need to be in the at least start in the correct location um, the only thing that breaks in this case is the vanilla animations forcing the bones into certain positions so, so you can see the muzzle flash comes out of the end of the barrel correctly but as we open the, the cylinder yeah you can see it doesn't fully um, extend into the right place. In fact, if you saw there, the yoke actually rotated very weirdly, sort of in the middle of itself. It's just where the bone is. But yeah, if uh, if you want to, to finish at this stage, if you want to just do NIF splicing and that's good enough for you, then you obviously need to make sure that you're, you're, you model with the bone position in mind. So, you know, the hammer needs to be at the correct pivot position and you know when you when you then splice it into the for example the 40 form nif the hammer then rotates around the correct position and strikes the correct point you know it's things like that <coughs> whereas for custom animation as i as i described you don't need to worry about that you can just place place the bones where you think they should be and then later on you know they'll end up self-defense I swear this is gonna be exciting because I don't actually know where he is I've got the UI off oh yeah poor doggos All right so yeah that concludes the nif splicing part I hope I wasn't too brief it was kind of uh, messy as well but that's just that's generally what nif, NIF scope is 
it's uh, it's quick and dirty, but it gets the job done. Those are the main main benefits. Oh yeah, I might as well turn my UI back on. I might as well show what the the collision actually does when the gun is on the ground. I'll have to investigate this cylinder thing later. That's interesting. When um, when you have incorrect collision, you can see the the barrel actually clips slightly into you know certain meshes. Kind of hard to see. I'll get a better angle. Yeah, see. So the collision is obviously wrong. And uh, the only way to fix that is by using the 3ds Max 2013 workflow, which allows you to set your own custom collision, as well as many other benefits. So that's uh, what I'll be covering. The uh, the other workflow you can use. So yeah.